Welcome Wednesday. Hi guys, Doreen here. And um, it's a beautiful Wednesday morning. I feel really good today. I got a really good workout this morning. Um, I wanted to hop on here real quick and talk about my blogs this week. The premise and the theme has been on getting out of your comfort zone and um, I've been reflecting on some personal stuff in my life that have been kind of uncomfortable, but learning how to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, so most of you, if, if you've been following my videos, um, I did start a new job, a new position, a whole new company, actually. Um, and it's a little bit different direction. So I work in um, the field of substance abuse disorder and I have been for some time now. I'm also going to school for psychology, you know, interested in mental health. Um, so primarily my positions have been in uh, substance abuse, primary diagnosis. Um, I have worked in a dual diagnosis detox unit, um, but it was still very heavily uh, substance use disorder. You know, I did get to experience and interact with some clients that had co-occurring, uh, you know, mental illness along with their substance abuse, but it wasn't too severe and it wasn't too prominent. Um, very few cases were that way. The position that I'm in now is prodigious predominantly mental health. So there's substance abuse. Some um, some don't feel they have a substance abuse disorder, and they may or may not, but their primary is mental health. And I'm interested in the combination because a lot of people that, um, you know, have substance abuse disorder do have mental health and I don't know of the numbers per se but if I had to throw a number out there I would be like 90% of people with substance abuse disorder has some kind of substance uh, some mental health whether that be you know anxiety depression it could be you know general anxiety it doesn't have to be a major depression or or something like that um, but there's also you know borderline there's um, manic depressive uh, schizophrenia actually is very, very common in substance abuse. And so um, the, the position that I took is not only uh, pred predominantly mental health, it's also a different level of care. So I've worked in detox, I've worked in um, what they call clinical stabilization units, which is, oh, no, I'm going to go that way, which is the next... Um, somebody go, which is the next step down from detox. So detox is usually about a week. CSS can be two weeks to, uh, two to four weeks typically. And then the last job I had was a TSS, was a transitional, um, services and support services. And basically people go there from CSS after they've been stabilized um, and they're looking for further treatment and perhaps even looking to go to even further treatment for a residential, um, like a halfway house or a sober house, predominantly halfway houses. But so for, for the most part, people that come to the CSS, they're waiting for a bed and we send referrals out to halfway houses. The position I have now is a partial hospital, hospital program which basically means it's an all-day program, but people don't live there. So the, the previous programs I've talked about is all people actually stay there overnight. You know, they live there for that, for whatever time. Um, so this uh, program is like an outpatient, but it's all day. It's from like 9 to, I think the last group is ends at 2.30. Um, so it's an all-day program. But, um, again, they don't, 
they don't live there and right now because of COVID it's all virtual so it's all through Zoom so all our groups are through Zoom individual uh, meetings with them are through Zoom we also have providers that meet with them through Zoom um, when I say providers I mean like a nurse practitioner psych nurse practitioner we have an acu acupuncturist um, and a doctor and a therapist so they meet clients will meet one-on-one -on -one with them now when they first come in actually they their intake it, they actually come into the facility and meet with all the, um, the team individual um, care and you know give given information on how to do the the zoom and whatnot um, so I know we went into a great detail about what I'm doing but the thing of it is is that it's new for me this mental health piece and like I knew like I said I've been aware with the uh, dual diagnosis uh, dual unit that I worked on a little bit but this is really uh, strong um, significant mental health and it's it's a little bit different it's a little bit challenging it's um, my approach is going, and I've been just kind of like shadowing right now. I just started on Monday, so I, I, the past couple of days I've just been shadowing. But my approach is going to be a lot different. Like the groups that I'm used to doing, a little bit more direct and a little bit more, well, heavily substance abuse um, topics. And even though I'm hired to do primarily substance abuse uh, topics, I have to keep in mind the you know the co-occurring um, mental illnesses and they're various not everyone has the same one some people have a, a, a you know uh, more than one so it's uh, it's gonna be challenging and I'm not gonna lie the first couple of days there I started questioning whether I made the right decision uh, maybe I shouldn't have left where I was at New Hope. I was comfortable at New Hope, um, at the TSS. I was comfortable in my position there and doing what I would do and I was very confident. Um, the thing with being comfortable though is that you tend not to grow. So being comfortable is actually not a healthy place to be. It's not a um, and it's different from being content. Now, being content and at peace with your life, being happy with, with uh, where you are in life and, and your achievements and what you want to, and your goals is different from being comfortable. Being comfortable means you're almost complacent. You're, you're pretty much just doing um, everything out of, you know, rote and you're not um, being creative. You're not engaging your, your cognitive skills and you know, and that's one of the things that um, happens a lot to seniors when they retire. Um, they don't have those challenging things, and so a lot of times they have memory loss and, and Alzheimer's and dementia. Even though they're diseases, they can be brought on by not exercising the brain. Um, it is a little bit more to that, but even just. Um, as you get older, you, you lose your, your memory. It's because you get so used to doing the same thing all the time, you're not really even challenging your brain. So, um, And I'm going to leave that topic for another video because that's that's a very interesting topic, and I've talked about it before, um, but that's another uh, for another video. So challenging yourself, getting out of your comfort zone is important, and we can do it in small ways. We don't have to jump ship and, and go into a different direction with our careers. Um, but getting out of your comfort zone, going to a different restaurant or a different coffee shop, uh, meeting new people, um, going to different meetings. Um, I know a lot of the the AA and NA meetings, and I do refuge, refuge recovery as well. They're they're all, they're still predominantly Zoom. Um, that gives you a great opportunity to check out ones on the other side of the country. Um, so, you know, getting out of our comfort zone and learning learning to be okay with those feelings of um, being uncomfortable and being uncertain and, you know, a little anxious, you know, learning how to deal with those feelings and being okay with those feelings is really important for your growth, for your health, 
mental and physical. And it's just something that, um, you know, I, I do try to practice, but it's just, you know, really um, come to a head in my life right now. And I realize that, yeah, this topic that I chose for the week, it's kind of funny that I chose it. And I, I chose it because of the topic like of change. I didn't really think of it as being um, uncomfortable, being, you know, out of your comfort zone. But it's just so, it's weird how that happens. And that's happened to me quite often. Things just align a certain way, and I do believe there's a reason for it. I don't know what that reason is, but it just so happens to, to be that way. You know, people come into my life at certain times, um, and they may not necessarily stay in my life, but there's a reason why they're in my life for that particular time, and it's just, it's just amazing. I, I, I really enjoy my life, and, and um, maybe maturity has a lot to do with it. I can reflect a lot on different things and have a new perspective anyway I hope you guys have a fabulous day the sun is shining I hope if you get the opportunity to go outside for a walk I hope I get the opportunity to go outside and get some fresh air I don't know if I'll be able to walk but uh, at least get outside and get some fresh air um, that would be wonderful today and that's also very healthy for you so follow me subscribe uh, look for me at Recovery Enthusiast. I'm on Facebook and Instagram under Recovery Enthusiast. I also have a couple of blogs, uh, motivationsforyou.com. That's motivations with an S, the number four, the letter U.com. Um, and also medium.com. That's another blog. I have podcasts on Anchor and Spotify. And I do have some online courses at Recovery Enthusiast. Dot com, and um, I'm, I'm actually in the works of revamping some of those courses, but check them out anyway. Um, and like I say, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of my videos, if there's something else you want to see um, or hear about. Let me know. Um, I, I welcome your feedback. As always, stay blessed. Hug the ones you love. Text the ones you love. Let them know. Remind them that you love them, that you care. Um, and live your life enthusiastically. Till next time. Peace.